Welcome to this annual community report from the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, Massachusetts. During this report, you will hear from each of the brothers in the community about our life and ministry, as well as some of the challenges and opportunities we have faced in the last 12 months. As you will hear, like many, we face the challenges of the global COVID pandemic head on. At the same time, along with the challenges, this year has brought many graces. The chief of those graces was the experience of being held in prayer as 11 of us tested positive for or showed symptoms of COVID this past January. Knowing that we, and especially I, was being prayed for during those two weeks was a tremendous grace and a source of strength and comfort. You will also hear how we have been experimenting with different kinds of online ministry and are now, finally, at long last, opening the chapel and guest house for in-person worship and retreats. You will see, too, that your prayers for the gift of vocations for our community are being answered as Brother Michael Hardgrove and Lane Wilson introduce themselves. I hope that in this short presentation, you will get a sense of what God is doing in our midst and how your prayers and friendship are helping us fulfill our mission to bring men, women, and children into closer union with God by the power of the Spirit that God breathes into us. It is a joy to have before us the prospect of an in-person gathering of the Fellowship of St. John on Saturday, May 7th, the Eastertide Feast of St. John the Beloved Disciple, our first since 2019. We'll have the honor that day of admitting as full fellowship members some of the 84 prob probationers who have long awaited reception during the pandemic. We as a community are grateful beyond measure to have been supported and uplifted by the gifts and spiritual companionship of nearly 1,000 members, near and far, during the long months of separation and isolation. FSJ members have extended the reach of the Brothers' online offerings into their local communities as witnesses to the Gospel and intercessors for the church and the world. While entrusting to us their own prayer requests and desires of God, fellowship members continue to keep a rule of life in conformity with ours in many walks of life and ministries in Christ's name throughout the world. I and all of your SSJE brothers have been graced and renewed by their invisible, yet powerful manifestation of the risen Christ's mystical body for the transformation and healing of the world. Thanks be to God. COVID has been a difficult time for all of us, and certainly we brothers have missed the presence of those eager to join us in the chapel for prayer, worship, and silence. We've been excited to start the process of reopening by inviting you to join us for the Sunday Eucharist, first in limited numbers and then more fully. As we've navigated the COVID pandemic with the help of our medical advisors, Movement Forward has been cautious, in part due to some brothers being considered vulnerable to COVID. However, we're happy to have commenced a broader reopening of the chapel. The chapel now is open to the public from morning prayer to Compline, Tuesday through Sunday. This includes, of course, our 5.30 p.m. Tuesday evening Eucharist. Given the current COVID situation and the vulnerability of some brothers, 
we do require that visitors to our chapel be vaccinated, boosted, and wear a mask. We pray, as always, for your safety and well-being as the pandemic enters new phases, and we very much look forward to welcoming your presence in the chapel. We hope the chapel may be a refuge of prayer, worship, and silence for all in need. We are slowly opening the guest house for in-person retreats. This past year, further without in-person guests was a difficult absence for us. It has been a delight to begin having a few join us this spring, including for Holy Week. We are better with you and under the same roof, round altar and tables. We desire to host. We know many are eager to come. We are updating our reservation system and will be hiring a new guest house manager. Brother Todd is now our hospitality brother. With him, we look forward to welcoming some through July and more in the fall and beyond. Hospitality is central, both being God's guest and welcoming others. You also bring Christ to us by your presence. We look forward to saying, welcome home. On January 11th of this year, I was already thinking a lot about illness. I was writing an article on praying with sickness, and January 10th, the day before, was the 12-year anniversary of my own diagnosis with an autoimmune condition. Yet I was unprepared for the news that greeted us all the next day. As we took up our work after a day of Sabbath rest, one of our brothers received the news we had all been dreading for quite some time. Despite all of our careful precautions, he had contracted the COVID virus. And while we took measures immediately to contain the virus, the fragility of human life about which our rules chapter on sickness speaks was transformed into something quite real from the quite conceptual place we usually heard it. As the days went on, one after another, 11 of us, including myself, tested positive for the virus and had to enter into a prolonged isolation. For almost a month, we were unable to pray the office together, joining instead for morning and evening prayer on Microsoft Teams. We were quite lucky though, as this mild restraint was the first any of us had had to face the virus and thanks to our careful medical advisors, we were in good, capable hands. We're grateful for all who held us in prayer during the month of January, for the constant availability of our medical advisors, and for our superior James, as he steered us through the worst of it. Let me first express our gratitude to you, our friends, and especially to those of you who have made it your practice to pray regularly for new vocations to our community. We continue to be blessed by a steady stream of qualified candidates. We are currently in dialogue with 11 men from 10 different states who have expressed interest in our life. This past year, we hosted 12 inquirer visits despite the restrictions of COVID and we anticipate several more inquirers' visits this summer. And the men who are coming are choosing to stay. We welcomed Lane Wilson as a new postulant in February and clothed Michael Hardgrove as a novice that same month. In March, we witnessed Todd Blackham making his first vows, and this summer we anticipate Lucas Hall making his life vows. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support, and we hope that you will join with us in thanking God for the gift of new vocations to our community. Formation is an essential part of monastic life. This is especially true when you are a new member of a monastic community. Our formation as brothers living under a rule of life 
did not stop under lockdown. In fact, it got more intense. That intensity has borne fruit. I can say for sure that we brothers have emerged out of lockdown better men than we were before. Certainly, we all have more gray hair and wrinkles from dealing with the stresses of the pandemic, but we have absolutely formed a stronger sense of community. Formation under lockdown presented us with a sink or swim situation. Living, working, and worshiping in close quarters with 14 other men is not easy. Just like the disciples on the boat on the stormy sea of Galilee, we brothers have all had moments under lockdown when we feared that we were going to drown. Again and again, we brothers have reached out to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to one another to help calm the storms within us. That is how we have grown in our formation as a community under lockdown. This year has seen the expansion of student ministries at the monastery. On Tuesday evenings, we have invited a group of about 15 students to share prayer, food, and conversation with the brothers. This group has grown throughout the year, and as the spring semester closes, we are excited to see how it develops over the summer. Our other major ministry with students has been our residency program, where graduate students live alongside us and participate in our cycle of prayer, work, and meals, while continuing their own programs of study. This year, our two residents, Sharon and Gabe, have been an amazing presence in the monastery, helping us especially in our liturgies, in our ministry of hospitality, and in connecting us with other local students. As Sharon and Gabe approach the end of their time here, we are in the final stages of choosing next year's residence. Excitingly, we've expanded the program and are inviting up to five students to live with us beginning this fall. Many people who have been close to the society for years first encountered us as students. It's been exciting to meet all these new friends, and we're looking forward to the year to come. With the support of my brothers, in June 2021, I became a postulant for holy orders in the Diocese of Massachusetts. Becoming a postulant, as many of you know, is the first formal step in the process of becoming an Episcopal priest. Along the way, there are several uh, contexts and containers in which the formation unfolds. One is clinical pastoral education, or CPE, uh, a field education placement with an Episcopal worship community and the general ordination exam. I spent the fall of 2021 participating in CPE at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, spending three days a week learning to provide spiritual care in a hospital setting was really an experience unlike any other I'd had. Doctors, nurses, social workers, and chaplains were all really stretched to their capacity. Within that environment of great challenge and also really deep need, I learned to bring some of the wholehearted presence, the deep listening, and the love for prayer that we cultivate here at the monastery into my encounters with suffering patients, families, and staff. In January, I was thrilled to begin a placement with Church of the Woods, a new kind of church rooted in the Episcopal tradition, called to love, heal, and bless the earth. The community worships outdoors on 106 acres of wild woods and wetlands in Canterbury, New Hampshire. I'll be spending Sundays with Church of the Woods through early October. There's a shorthand we use at the monastery to describe different types of ministry that we offer. And as we've learned to work within new limitations and new opportunities, de-ministry or digital ministry has become a place for us to experiment with doing old things in new ways and developing brand new offerings that weren't on our radar before. You're probably most familiar with the monthly FSJ gatherings we've been hosting. 
Uh, this year, D Ministry has also included online retreats around the themes of praying with and through chronic illness, deepening silent prayer practice, and embodied lament. Brothers have also been able to connect with groups all over the country to lead quiet days and workshops for congregations, vestries, clergy groups, and diocesan functions. We're excited to continue this new form of ministry with ongoing video discussion series, podcasts, and of course, continuing to live stream services from the chapel. It means a lot for us to be able to make these offerings across distance, and we love to know where you're tuning in from and sharing with others. God came to be with us in Christ, and we are always looking for ways to fulfill our incarnational ministry with you. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we brothers have sought new ways to engage across the chasm of the COVID shutdown. We installed cameras in the church to help others join in our stream of worship. We have worked with organizations such as Virginia Theological Seminary and Tri-Tank to share the preached word to small congregations with limited resources. And we have been exploring new ways to connect with a younger generation who are traveling on their spiritual paths to faith in ways that are unique to their lived experience. Our latest exploration has been a redesign of Cowley Magazine, which has sought to retain the classic look while expanding its appeal with gloss, more images, and cutting edge articles, all that seek to broaden the success we have experienced with our vocations program catchthelife.org. Each issue of Cali now features installments on a broader theme. Each can be read separately in its own right or read as a complete volume with threads that weave them together. The Epiphany issue explored the question, what does it mean to believe? The upcoming Ascension issue considers how does God engage with us? And in Advent, we will finish the series with what does it mean to belong? We hope you will enjoy the new Cowley magazine and share it with others. Thank you for all the ways you engage with us on your journey of faith. The founder of our community, Richard Muse Benson, was zealous about our being good communicators. And he called us men of the moment, very actively engaged in what God is up to in this world. We've been doing a lot of experimenting in our communications. One relationship we have been growing is a partnership with TriTank. TriTank, T-R-Y-T-A-N-K is a joint project of Virginia Theological Seminary and the General Theological Seminary as an online experimental lab to try new ways to communicate Jesus' good news and to draw people together into community. Look at TriTank's website and you'll see a large number of very creative communication experiments going on. We have participated in a number of ventures with TriTank. One request they brought to us was to provide Sunday sermons for small congregations in the United States and Canada who do not have a priest. In the monastery, we brothers video recorded sermons for the Sundays in Advent and then the Sundays in Lent, plus Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. We are told that the sermons have been received by 90,000 individuals in missions and in parishes. Father Benson would be pleased. Lockdown. I really hate that word because I think lockdown threatens the very thing we all need to thrive and be happy, which is connection 
and relationship. I expect all of you have known something of that painful experience of isolation during this pandemic. Some people have said to me, oh, well, you're a monk and live a cloistered life. You probably don't mind lockdown, do you? <laughs> well, how wrong they are. Certainly part of our monastic life is intentionally solitary, silent, contemplative. But another hugely important part of our life is about ministry. Our life as a community has been diminished by living months of lockdown with no guests in the guest house, no one worshipping with us in chapel, no traveling to lead retreats. We, like you, have missed connection and relationship, and it has been a, a real challenge. But with the challenge <clears throat> has also come many graces. So many people really missed worshiping with us, and so we experimented with live streaming our worship. And then we started using Zoom more and more and leading retreats and offering spiritual direction online. I personally have been able to connect with friends in Colombia to enrich my ministry there. And we now realize that this online ministry, <clears throat> born out of necessity, has actually become a real blessing. Thanks be to God. Hello, my name is Michael and I'm a novice at SSJE. I've been at SSG for about 10 months now and I was closed in late February. Life as a novice is going really well, although not without its challenges. It's a little more challenging given COVID, of course, especially as we excitedly reopen, just to have to shut down because of the new surge and then we all get COVID and are sick for two weeks, but we all know how frustrating that is. Uh, I'm praying way more than I ever have in my whole life, easily, and my prayer life has deepened and matured pretty dramatically in a relatively short time. So I'm incredibly grateful to be here living with, working with, and learning from the brothers. Being a novice is a tricky time because it's a profound time of adjustment. I grew very accustomed to having my life be a certain way and having a certain idea about what my future holds. And then suddenly my whole life is turned on its head and it has been an extraordinarily enriching experience so far, even during a pandemic. And I wanna thank all of you for your prayers and your support. Hi, I'm the newest postulant here at the monastery. I'm originally from Lexington, Kentucky, but for the last decade, I lived in Arlington, Virginia and Washington, DC. There, I worked on digital research and publications at a museum and research institute in Georgetown, specifically on Byzantine art and history. Since I arrived at the monastery three months ago, I've learned a lot. As the new guy, I've learned about new schedules and responsibilities, and the ins and outs of living with 14 other men. But most importantly, I've learned what an immense privilege it is to be part of this community. Each day brings fresh invitations to discover new facets of my relationship with myself, with God, and with the society and our friends. So thank you for your prayers and support. Thank you for your prayers and support both for me as an inquirer and postulant, and for all new vocations and for the ongoing life and ministry of this amazing community. I can't wait to discover what our future holds. God bless. Friends, it is now time for me to conclude by simply saying thank you. Thank you for the gift of your friendship and support over these last 12 months. Your prayers and support for all the brothers have been essential as we have navigated life during these complex and challenging times. 
I also want to express my own personal gratitude to you for holding me personally in your prayers. I know that you pray for me because many of you tell me you do so. That means an enormous amount to me. These are challenging days for anyone in leadership, and your prayers for me sustain and encourage me. Thank you for, your, for the gift of your prayers. Please know that we also hold you in our prayers. Though the pandemic has physically isolated and separated us, it has also united us. For in prayer for one another, we have been brought together in the very heart of God. There in the heart of God, we have been able to embrace, encourage, uphold, and enfold one another, even in these challenging times. My prayer for you, as it is for my brothers, and indeed for the world, in these coming months, is that we may be one in the heart of God, where all are embraced, encouraged, upheld, and enfolded by the love of God. Wherever you are and whatever you face in the days ahead, may you know that to be true. So thank you. Thank you for the gift of your friendship. Thank you for the gift of your prayers. Please know that we pray for you.